This is our Berryessa release. We will have downloaded this in the background to your tool and uh, we're excited to present it to you now. So I'm gonna run you through a lot of the uh, performance enhancements and uh, tweaks and uh, improvements to workflows that you'll see on tool now. Uh, grid has had a huge overhaul. So here we see uh, we can do our touch off live in this screen. Uh, we can set how deep we want to go with the cutter and we can set the grid increment. We can set this to anything we like. Uh, I'm going to choose a one inch increment. Uh, we're no longer locked to presets. So what we're doing with this is we're taking a workspace, a field of tape, which we know exactly where we are relative to that due to our scan process. We're now teaching it where we are relative to this edge. So where the tape is relative to this edge so that we can place things accurately within this workspace. So to do that, I'm gonna take this cutter and take it to the edge, plunge down quarter of an inch. Uh, we've got the cutter inserted upside down and it has a quarter inch shank uh, dropping down. So we can use that as a known reference point. So I'm going to do that now by hitting new grid and plunge, just following the instructions here. So uh, I'm on the right hand side of my X axis. If I space this out a reasonable way, uh, we should get an accurate uh, reference for X. So I just move the tool until I feel that uh, cutter just touch the, uh, the X panel on the side there. I move over to the left uh, and you'll see it's telling us to do the next point, uh, highlighted blue there. Um, so this will get us a left hand point defining our X axis. Uh, then we whip around the corner and now I just touch it against the y-axis. We only need one sample here. You'll see that highlighted on our uh, little diagram. Touch that and you will see our grid is now perfectly aligned to our panel. So now you'll see across our whole workspace we have a one inch increment grid uh, and there are a bunch of features attached to that. So we can disable that and re-enable that easily. Uh, we can also go in and change our grid spacing to say half inch. And you'll notice it's become a much finer grid. I'll zoom in and you'll see there. So these are half inch increments. Uh, we can also do things like we look at the coordinate system. So uh, you'll see here it's snapping to the nearest point and you'll see it should be going up in half inch increments as we move an X. So 12 and a half, 13, 13 and a half. Uh, we'll take a look at the import features that should make life a lot easier and uh, more productive and more flexible. So looking at my USB drive, uh, I'll grab this file. Uh, we'll go through them independently. Uh, snap, basically the one at the bottom here. This enables us to link our shape to the workspace. So the probed grid you'll see is dictating the orientation of this shape, not origin. Um, so I can disable that and you'll notice uh, the shape is now tied exactly to origin. So this is the usual sort of uh, visual placement we're used to uh, and we can quickly without disabling the grid uh, completely uh, switch between that mode and uh, this snapping to grid increments and remaining orthogonal to the grid. So next up we have uh, Anchor. Uh, so here we see the way we traditionally placed shapes. Uh, we were locked to this center and bottom of the SVG shape. So this enables us to, instead of being locked into the center bottom of our shape, which is the current uh, workflow with Origin, uh, we can now choose any of these nine points. So bottom left, this enables us to now a, read out the coordinates we're snapping to at the bottom left there, so we don't have to make marks on our workspace and count uh, increments. We can just read this here and confidently now snap to 11 inches by two inches in wire. Uh, now we're looking at rotate. So now we can rotate uh, exactly relative to our grid. So this is a little different to how it was previously. It used to be uh, 45 uh, degree increments. Now we can choose any rotation angle. So this is giving us an angle relative to our grid coordinate space. Uh, and you'll see we, we're now snapping to the bottom center. Once again, we can choose the bottom left if we want or wherever and uh, snap that as we wish. And that brings us to the scale feature. So previously we were stuck with the scale that was embedded in our SVG file. So it's a 10 inch by whatever uh, file. This one's 14 inches wide, say. 
uh, we were stuck with that and there was no options on tool. We had to go back to our computer to change it. So uh, now you'll notice we have a scale button here. As we place the shape, we can go in and manipulate that. So I want a 10 inch object. And there you have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so we're now a lot more flexible in the field and are less likely to be caught out with the wrong size file. We can uh, make whatever change we like uh, live as we go. So this opens up a lot of opportunities and will hopefully make uh, you a lot more flexible out there cutting with Origin. So there's one more subtle improvement here with the pen tool. Uh, historically, we were locked into doing uh, closed shapes. You'll see how it says add point. Uh, and then when we close it, it becomes a continuous shape. Uh, now we can go in and do open shapes, which uh, seems pretty simple, but it's actually very effective. So you'll see where that says uh, add point. And once I've accepted that, it switches over to finish. So when I click finish, I can now cut that live. So if I switch to live view, cut mode, um, and then we'll say online, there's our cut. So any shape we like, uh, open or closed, we can now do that with uh, faceted straight lines.